how health is in general, and then utilizing that as a scorecard to continue to, complete, to optimize. So we're utilizing it where we can and testing it in terms of PDP, like imagery optimization. And I'd love for us to get to video, video yeah. content. Yeah. We talk about doing full funnel campaigns. And so again, if anyone out in the AI community is building these things, it's not just a one image thing. It's, you're going to have to think multi-dimensional, multi-channel, multi exactly, yeah. multi-formats. It's got a stream TV, but then land out a PDP that says the same thing. And as long as you have the same characters, art form and expression come through, it's a win. How AI initiatives or how AI projects your teams are working on or the overall model is are working on impacting business strategy? Are they just experimental or learning projects? Or did you start seeing real hardcore impact on the business goal, business strategy impacted by AI initiatives? Both of them because of the different application that you might have. First of all, the general answer that I can give you is AI applications are already a reality. I don't think all, not to mention robotics, but a lot of large language model application text optimization is already there. If I think of generative AI, we are discussing a lot about that. Is as you say, a hot topic that is taking a, a good share of our mind. In the marketing area, generative AI is already a reality for Mondelez. When it comes to the adaptation and application to digital champ, for example, is one of the three pillars of application of AI. But what we see in the industry with our partner retailers and manufacturer is that you have two options. One is to adapt something that is ready from the shelf and adapt your strategy or uh, use the existing one. Or, and this is the way that Mondelez choose, is to develop your proprietary brand technologies. And this requires a very high level of responsibility because you choose how to fit these, uh, these AIs as generative AI in order to ensure that you have the right response to your company value. And this is what is making me very proud of the way that w what Mondelez chose to develop. But I'm also conscious that this requires time. It requires, this is where I'm referring, execution of generative AI for marketing is already a reality. The application to the retailers is, is something that we are testing. But the development of technology, as you know, is very fast. So it's already a reality for the U.S. will be applied in H125. And the next step at the early beginning of 25 will be the application for Europe, exactly with, a, with the main market that we have in the U.K. with Cadbury chocolate. And U.S. will be Chips Ahoy. I think Chips Ahoy, exactly. Yes. Now I want to drill down to the AI topic a little more, the sexiest two-letter word of our decade. And... You what would a podcast be without AI, <laughs> exactly. right? Yeah. yeah, what would be just kicked out? You mentioned some good example about the content, but I want to get a little deeper than that. If you can give us some a little juicy, saucy examples. Where did you get most benefit from recent AI implementations? It doesn't have to be a name of a product, but a use case for AI tech. Did you unlock something new recently with the AI? I think what we're seeing is where the marketing fluff is where we can promote our product a little bit more. So we're testing it a lot of different places. Right. So let's just be honest. And, and I think everybody is. What I would like to see is imagery take on the next four for like, that is the next thing that we tackle. And we're seeing some really great, some great work coming out of our, our AI generation. They're not there yet. They're certainly not there yet. But let's take tech aside for a second. And let's talk about more like legislation. What's right. really going to be right. the issue is regulatory, right? Right? We're going to have some breaks on being soon. Okay. If you look at what it would take to prompt an AI generation tool to create something is about, what, two paragraphs long with all your brand guidelines, with what it should and all should claims. not include, all the claims that it should have, right? Starting from scratch is going to be really difficult for brand teams. So oh. we don't see a lot of platforms enabling those brand guidelines and that control. But even that aside, even if that did exist, I'd love your opinion on this too. I feel like something almost needs to go wrong in the world where some commercial activity, which is like they used AI, it was driven out there, but now consumers feel like they were blindsided or it was, it was falsely led to believe for, for legislation to come in and say, okay, here are the do's, here are the don'ts, here is how you're going to measure AI. Like if it's a filter or if it's got to be a disclaimer somewhere for CPGs at mass to feel more comfortable with approaching it. Because 
it's not, it's very gray and there's no black and white right now. I, and I, I think I we're agree. waiting for that to, uh, to happen. Unfortunately. It like, is, it is too murky. Well, I agree with it's that. Too murky. Yeah. And we need some kind of natural or in the deliberate intervention yeah. to make it into put on the yeah. rail. But going back to the, I think the use cases that we're seeing right now, what we're winning in is your description options, your keyword options, and assessing your overall PDP scores. Like we're, we're looking at how health is in general, and then utilizing that as a scorecard to continue to, complete, to optimize. So we're utilizing it where we can and testing it in terms of PDP, like imagery optimization. And I'd love for us to get to video, video yeah, content. Yeah. We talk about doing full funnel campaigns. And so again, if anyone out in the AI community is building these things, it's not just a one image thing. It's, you're going to have to think multidimensional, multi-channel, multi exactly, yeah. multi-formats. It's got a screen TV, but then land on a PDP that says the same thing. And as long as you have the same characters, art form and expression come through, it's a win. I'll be admitting my own uh, sharing here because we've been working with CPG. Sometimes we share some external examples for different categories, what others are doing in a non-competitive category. And uh, Colgate Palmolive is always ahead of the curve from where we can see from our vantage point. And I mean, it's been like the last four or five years. I always admire Colgate the content, even when I was working at L'Oreal or Mondelez, different categories. So I always use a lot of examples from you guys and a mix of other CPGs. Look, this is how it's done in a different category in an agile and a contextual way. So kudos on that. I want to come back to the two letter sexy word of our decade AI. Ah, yes. Can you give us a little bit of? I learned this uh, phrase from Neil Aurora, by the way, uh, how the sausage is done. We call it, we call it what's running under the hood usually in the yeah, US, yeah, yeah. but can you give us a little bit of interesting examples, how AI has been deployed or utilized in profit terror world? Yes. Of course, it's a technological engine, but if there's any new features driven by AI, can you walk us through a little bit of what we can see? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first thing goes back to the very beginning I said about surfacing the invites, insights. It's, it's about that, that get stage. So we launched what we call Ask Profitero. It's our own AI chatbot. And it is simple. Like I know that going into Profitero, there's a lot of data there. We have huge amounts of data. And sometimes you think, where do I start? But all you want to do is, I, I, look, just tell me what is driving my sales or, or why am I losing visibility, all these kind of things. So that's what we did. We created this AI chatbot. And now, if you're a marketer and you're just interested in what, perhaps with content, where are there opportunities, where have I got compliance issues and where have I got opportunities to improve? You can ask that question. Supply chain, again, you can visualize really very clearly within just asking one question, the impact of being out of stock. And, and sales, again, we cover digital shelf, we cover assortment and availability, we cover pricing, content, search, ratings and reviews. That's five, five data sets. Right. Just ask one question, <clears throat> ask Profitera, we'll tell you, I'm losing sales on Carrefour, what's the reason? Or I'm losing it on Amazon, what it is. We can sort of surface that. Just one real, I think, great case study. So we also do a lot of webinars for our, for our clients. I'm, I'm recording one tomorrow, actually, on how to get the most out of ratings and reviews. And you might have hundreds and hundreds of reviews to go through. You can create a word cloud. Yeah, you can export the data, but that all takes time and it, they're a bit messy. Just ask Profitero, ask a question. What are the key issues or what are the main negative issues for my mm -hmm. brand? What are the positive issues? Within three questions, within about three minutes, I can tell you what is the most important issue that shoppers are telling you is a problem with a brand. And I can tell you what are the main products that it's whether the retailers it's achieving, it, those are appearing, and what are the products they're appearing on. So within, I say, three minutes, rather than having to analyze hundreds and hundreds of reviews and just get lost in the And fog, you don't need to know SQL or Python to do that. No, <laughs> you can ask a question. Tell me. Yeah, it, so, that, so that's great. So that's one example. I've mentioned already shelf intelligent content. This, this is where, so we have a sort of, it's bringing a culmination of various different tools. Our search optimizer, which is our AI keyword tool, to optimize giving you quantified keywords by retailer. I mentioned one in seven keywords are common across retailers. Right. So understanding what is the, the most important list by retailer means you can, you can prioritize those. At the same time then, we have our content KPI tool to, to using AI to analyze hundreds and thousands of content changes on retailer websites and see which are the ones that move the needle. So as I said, we can highlight the keywords. We can highlight the content, the written content that you need to in include. At the moment, at this stage, give it six, 12 months, it'll be a fully automated closed loop system. Now, as brands are sort of learning to trust it and because they want to keep control, obviously, of brand equity, 
you approve that, and then we can automatically syndicate it out through our partnership with Sourceify, for example. So that's where it's really exciting. And, and, and again, this is only valuable and, and beneficial if, if people can understand the benefit from it. So we have case studies who people have used our content recommendations from Shelf Intelligent Content. So really good increase, 17% one brand, 17% increase in traffic. But double that, it was a 34% increase in sales. And that's just simply by taking our recommendations, going yes, and letting us do all the rest. So this is where AI is ultimately changing, and that's pushing us to that go stage. Go and automating recommendations and just making things more efficient. Avoid wasting time on things that mo- don't move the needle. Just focus your time on things that are going to drive your sales. and accelerate as That's fast it. as you can. That's it. Instead of waiting for the perfect or best in solution. Exactly. Sometimes exactly. agility is much more effective and impactful than waiting for some magical things to happen. But very quick question, because I know some global enterprises are launching initiatives around Gen AI, improving and impacting the business, etc. And some of them are preparing for the risks around the Gen AI. Is Gen AI technology overall is a risk and threat for some workforce, or is it an opportunity and lever for the global leadership that they can utilize and use it towards improving their performance? No, look, it's got to be both, right? How I'm thinking about it is as an opportunity, because I see more upside than I see uh, downside. I guess I'm just a glass half full kind of person. In terms of the, the upside, And even if you think about something like content, an obvious uh, application, one of the things I was talking about was the increased demands of content. It's what my colleagues in in marketing call this multiplicity effect. You can definitely see how Gen AI can play a greater role where actually what we'll be able to do is serve our consumers and our shoppers with more appropriate personalized content. So I think content is going to be an arms race to really provide the best experiences of our brands and those of us that are able to do it and will be the ones that, that win in the, in the future. In terms of the risks, it comes back to capabilities. If we don't reskill ourselves now, then we will be victims of this change. If we skill ourselves now, then we can ride the wave. Yes. So this is how I think about it. Perfect.